Hello, me again. Uh, we're going to be talking about Marcus Almeida today. Um, we're discussing kind of the, how the consumer, um, how brands target the consumer, how brands can approach a younger audience through social advertising. Um, but before we get started, um, I'll let my panel introduce themselves. Do you want to start down the end there, Essie? Hi, I'm Essie Buckman. I'm the designer and founder of 40 Label, a new contemporary women's wear fashion brand. I'm Dino. I'm um, a fun employed freelancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Moa Lola, and I'm a menswear and print graduate from CSM. I'm Rosanna Falconer. I'm business director at Matthew Williamson. Cool. Um, so thank you guys for coming in. Um, I'm going to start by jumping in the deep end, kind of both of you guys, designers working with brands. Mark is made has a great social strategy, but in your opinion, are there any other brands that are ringing the bells for you on social strategy and why? Feel? No. Really new. I think there's a lot. Of, of... Gucci, well, yeah. Gucci, yeah, because yeah. they're doing that thing with Snapchat, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. But Gucci's like a one end of the spectrum. You know, you've got brands like Tommy Hilfiger and Gucci that have uh, treated like a firmly established mm. long term brand. These are brands that advertise. There's, that is one way you have to approach your social media. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's so fantastic about Gucci is that it runs through all sides of their marketing, often with established brands. The emailers, for example, can really jar or the website's a bit bad, and then the Instagram's fantastic, whereas the brand message across Gucci is the same and consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the ethos of Marcus Almeida runs through everything that they do, and I think that's why the social campaign is so strong. Mm -hmm. The kind of fun, MA girl, um, inclusive, non-exclusive fashion, mm. I think, just pervades everything that they do. I think in a similar but a very different way, it's Jacques Mus, who is like, oh, yeah. whose Instagram is probably like the most followed between gay people and straight girls. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know any friend that probably doesn't have anything to do with fashion or like so many of them who like literally have no interest in fashion whatsoever, but they, they like absolutely fall in love, fell in love with Jackie Moose and they follow him on Instagram and I see constantly it popping out. So I feel like his like, Instagram is very different than Marcus Almeida where you don't have either of the designers in the limelight, but for him it's like his, you know, which I think is an interesting point where a designer has one Instagram for himself, so it's not a private, like Alessandro Michele and then Gucci. You've got uh, Jacquemus Instagram, which is a mix of his own daily life, where he goes and like, on, goes onto the Seine and drinks wine, and then like shows also his catwalk shows and all that. So I think he's an interesting point in terms of social media, how um, from a very, very personal perspective, a person can um, kind of sell himself and kind of be quite successful. And how many followers has he got, if we can see that? It's like, yeah, 321K. Yeah. So. I think it's very okay. natural to him. Like, yeah. A lot of people yeah, kind of like honest. force it and you can kind of tell. And he just like puts up what he's into and like, that's more authentic. And like we can like appreciate that more. I think that's the difference also between Marcus Almeida and Gucci mm -hmm. in that Gucci is kind of fun and playful, but I don't think it's as approachable as Marcus Almeida. Yeah. And Marcus Almeida has this kind of like, I'm your friend, I'm your pal. Like you, sh you want to be involved in what I'm doing. Like their invites, anything like that is kind of come on a night with me or... Yeah. Mm. It's an open call kind exactly, of thing. Exactly, yeah. And it's what they did with their castings for a very long time. And they're still, they constantly, whenever they have, you know, a show coming up, they're fully like open to kind of come and say, you know, come and say hi, or we're gonna be here, you can just drop by or just send yeah. us a DM or something mm, like that. It's very natural. Yeah. yeah they used to do dope. like pop-up stores like yeah. a while ago, and it was cool because like you could just go and buy them, rather than having to wait for like a store to stock list it and like look for it everywhere. They did sample and they're, sales. They're, um, I don't know if you've seen, has anyone seen their campaign in real life on, it seems to be a street corner, I don't know where. I haven't actually. Um, mm. Oh, well, it's on their Instagram. Um, their first campaign that is actually print media advertising came out Which last the, week. Which is the loads of the girls. Yeah, no. but also with Mel Ricky's son carrying a Mar Marcus Almeida bag, which is really That's cute. cute. Uh. And it just is infused with, there he is, in the bottom left corner. It's just wow. infused with fun. <laughs> and That's new. That's actually a new campaign. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. And I think it's so different to the kind of fashion campaigns that we're typically seeing. But they've always been known, two years ago, their first campaign, they just put out a bit of a kind of open call vibe yeah. to photographers saying, we'd love to see how you interpret the, the collection. There's no brief from us other than wanting, if you, it can be text, it can be video, it can yeah. be image. 
see what you come back with. Mm. And I think um, also the way they put it out as well was really interesting. Rather than putting it out in a magazine or on Instagram, mm -hmm. you had to email the comms director personally and it mm. would be sent via personal email. It's so very a really unique approach. Viceland kind of approach to, uh, you know, call, call this phone number and find out what's yeah. up on that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and it's an interesting, interesting point. You know, they're like, I think their brand is so connected to East London and I feel like, you know, they kind of are the Dulstonites, I would feel like, you know, the true ones where you can actually act, go on into Dulston for what, however it looks today, but you can still go there and you can actually see loads of girls wearing their stuff, which I think it's, you know, a, such a unique thing for them that they're one of the f very few brands, I oh, love Heim, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, they're like one of the few brands that they get like this huge following where people actually wear their clothes and it's yeah. not just about, you know, buying frayed denim, which mm. I feel like they were almost single-handedly the people that brought like frayed denim into yeah, like actually back like true. back to life, yeah. Uh, I've got a pair of jeans from them and I've worn them to death. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah but completely broken. Like <laughs> But you know, you've got the you've got the H and M's, the Zara's, everyone. Every, like the frayed denim is now like such a normal thing, and I feel yeah. like maybe five years ago it wasn't really, yeah. and they were the ones who kind of did that, and Rihanna wore it, and then from then on it went a lot of places. I think there's something uh, like genuine about MA. It's just like it's not people try and do this kind of East London girl, but they're mm. not trying. It just kind of comes, it just flows easily, and I feel like it's not daunting, it's not like unapproachable, it's kind of like everyone kind of can relate to this MA girl in some way and have a piece and can like fuck it up with something like, you know, really oversized or really street or really gangster or something that's really like feminine and floaty and I kind of think they have the perfect balance with that mm -hmm. and with that like they kind of draw different kinds of customers and I think it's hard to get that in this day and age. I think that's also connected in, because they are the denim guys, yeah. Yeah. denim itself is so customizable, yeah. it's something yeah. that Everyone, Everyone wears their own way, exactly. they care up, whatever. So I think that really helps with the whole aspect. Is there anything they're not doing? Is there anything they're missing? On social or in general as a brand? I feel like... They're both. I feel like their last campaign, the new campaign that I just saw was kind of like, yeah, a bit different and interesting. But I feel like their first campaign was like loads of girls in like one empty white space. And I mean, I know I'm going to be that person that like keeps on saying it, but like, I think we have to be fair and, you know, treat everyone the same way. And it was, if their whole thing was always diversity and kind of people of different like styles and like body shapes and stuff like that. But the girls were like, I think either predominantly white or like all white, yeah. which is a bit for me, you know, like East London, all of that, it was a bit problematic. And once again, I know like <clears throat> there are young people then like, we should still kind of, you know, if we mention it when it comes to Vetmo and Balenciaga, we should also mention it when it comes to that. But I think they, they, they do, re I feel like they, there is kind of this private kind of thing about them when they're not in the limelight because you don't ever see them ever. Like mm. there's not like none of their faces on their Instagrams. Yeah. So I feel like that's kind of a different, you know, thing with them where they kind of keep, keep themselves out of the story. I think it's probably they use the MA girl as their face yeah. rather than them. Exactly. Mm. And actually during the show on the back of all the press releases, they had a huge portrait of each of the MA girls. So mm. every, every member on the front row got a different girl ML, and... MA girl face. Mm. And I think you were right in saying that's kind of the way of making it super approachable. No yeah. one else really has that. I don't know, correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. No. Um, I think Molly God Goddard has, and she's another one who I'd say she has a really good for a, an em no, she's emer emerging, established emerging. There's a fine line. I would say she has a very good marketing strategy that runs across mm. all platforms again. And she did that similar thing where she's put an emphasis on the Molly Goddard girl mm. and yeah. on the fun that they have. You know, I just don't think we will ever forget. Was it was two years ago now, the Molly's fun party. First the rave one. Yeah. It was just the, yeah. her very first show, but it, oh, okay. it wasn't really a show. It was a presentation. It was a rave, like, where they were, like, partying at the Spitzerfields market. Exactly. Yeah. And I just think that that, that uh, it's that, again, it's, it's so infused, that feeling of the, the Molly Goddard woman, that it touches everything. Really, it feels really effortless, like you were yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, and I think it's quite, it's a very good strategy to put the emphasis on the woman rather than on the creative director or creative directors in this case. It takes the pressure off a bit. It also makes it much easier for everyone to associate with. Mm. Um, yeah. I think, I think with Molly, although I think her, her like, 
she has this thing of a product, which is this dress, which is kind of like her thing. And it's like almost like a, her, she's like a patentee of that dress. And that's, mm. you know, her signature. And that's why she's so commercially successful. I feel like the difference between Marquez and Molly's, Molly's, I feel like she's not a social media kind of designer. I don't feel like her, her social media kind of presence is, does like kind of shapes her designs when I feel like with Marquez they are really one of the rare people that mm. you know they I know they I went backstage I think two seasons ago or last season and, and you see that they're like yeah they the girls came over and we gave them you know a choice of what they want to wear so kind of the girls genuinely do style themselves mm. and um yeah, and it's kind of that, and they have these, fit, all these girls are their fitting models, mm -hmm. you know, and they come throughout the design process, mm -hmm. so they, they feed off of them, and I feel like then they, you know, probably they don't pay, I mean, I don't know, but like I was assumed they give them like, you know, a jacket, or, yeah. you know, and I feel like that's how, that's how you build a brand, but I feel like we're, forget, like one important thing for Marquez was, which I think, I don't think they would be this successful if it wasn't for the LVMH prize two years ago, which kind of like, boosted their like obviously finance mm. so much yeah. and they could then allow themselves to create like a full range of accessories of shoes which is you know creating this full brand is what yeah. it's about mm. so yeah I feel like they're like really really one of the rare people that are able to do that I think the it's shoes hard for Molly to like sorry no, go for it. I think it's hard for like a brand to kind of especially a young one to stay consistent and not be kind of scared that oh am I, be am I boring my clientele am I boring my clients like so for Molly to do that and it's still strong every time and it's still so her unapologetically, I think it's very admirable. And I don't think with her kind of style, you don't really need to go ham on the social media because you, it's so strong anyway mm -hmm. that you don't really need to force it or not to yeah. say like MA is forcing it on anyone, but mm. you don't need to kind of go so hard when your stuff is so like synonymous to everyone already. And I think at such an early stage, it's quite admirable. But I think what both designers do really yeah. well is that it feels right for their brand. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, That's yeah. what you said about just going too forceful. And yeah. you can just tell when something's tell. inauthentic. And you, it, it bores you in the feed and, and yeah. you try and unfollow them. And <laughs> <laughs> but they still sure keep, her, they they still keep they on popping up. Story, yeah. They're still <laughs> on the floor. Yeah. They're always on the top of floor. We all know them. We all know you. Like, oh um, no, but I feel like you can see, I, I think a brand that we would um, mention, who I mm. think are really, really interesting, um, is like Celine in terms of social media. I feel like their Instagram mm. is like, kind of the most obnoxious thing where they put like the most random things ever like literally yeah. I mean <laughs> genuinely if you open Instagram of, like Celine's Instagram it's not about the product it's no. not about Phoebe it's not about anything like genuinely it's like one bag and then like 50 photos of like whatever it is yeah. I mean, so it's, aloof you know, yeah. so that's aloof. the exactly. thing and they were the last brand to kind of you know embrace Instagram and they're I'm like kind of into it though yeah, I, I kind of like it yeah it's like, like obnoxiousness yeah. it's like we've come so far why do we even need a gram like I don't want one up there it's a bit obnoxious yeah thing, like, yeah but I kind of like that yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of like seeing uh, when Brown just put like people wearing their clothes mm. and yeah like, every yeah. single time and, and then it feels like a PR feed exactly, exactly. like yeah. buy us because we'll post you with like yeah. oh there's one I love that's a brand coach um, when Stuart Vivas arrived there, it all changed. Mm. As you know, from the moment he was at Marbury to Love, he has such... This is now looking quite PR-y, because they've just... Ooh, yeah. <laughs> But, like, he has such a, a fun approach to mm. fashion with the motifs and the emblems that he uses and the glitter that was on the catwalk and whenever maybe it's his personal feed then as well whenever he posts something like an article maybe yeah. Yeah. rather than putting up an, a picture of the editorial being like look at this great, great editorial I got this month he'll mm. do it it's on his desk and then he gets graphics of kind of fun emojis okay. that are from his prints put on top of that yeah. so it's oh, it, it's in your feed you know instantly that it's coach or Stuart Beavers um, and yet you're still getting that kind of brand message so I think that's what brands often struggle with how to make something look intrinsic to the brand but still fun and appealing and let's not forget Instagram is where you go for inspiration not exactly. to be that's fed a message yeah. I mean well that's I feel like that's kind of arguable though like whether it's Instagram we go for inspiration or whether we go to shop and whether, you know, like now I feel like Instagram is becoming so shoppable and yeah. like it's so kind of like it takes you straight. It's not anymore to like keep you on Instagram anymore. Once, you know, the monetizing of it, I feel like there's brands that, that are, yeah, like they, they, 
I don't know, like when a Gucci launched their perfume, they did the whole like filter on Insta stories or, um, you know, they did like a lot of, or like was it Snap, Snapchat? I don't know. Right. So they had the whole like kind of Gucci bloom filter and stuff. So I feel like there is a lot to do with, and then if you swipe that you can like go and yeah, buy you can it. Swipe up. Swipe yeah. Up. There's no other way. You can only shop on stories unless you use like, to there you is, can't shop on a post. There is like on a, because now there's obviously the, in your feed, they appear like the sponsored post, mm. yeah. which if you press, like it, that, that has oh, nothing yeah, to do with your hey, No, that is That's true. what I mean. Yeah. You know? I think a lot of brands, certainly from our perspective, yeah. it's always it always will get a better reception if it's not Something. a brand campaign. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, because yeah. people are like, I came here to be inspired, and I want to see what Matthews is on Matthews' mood board for yeah. the week, or how he's just designed a corner of his sitting room, not the latest campaign. Yeah. You know? no, no, I agree. I mean, that's yeah. why I think Phoebe, like Celine's Instagram is probably like looks like how people imagine if. Phoebe Philo had an Instagram, yeah, it just how like it would look really like. Nice mm -hmm. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And it's it's kind of like people, you know, it's like her private, like if she was like a nobody kind of, and she had an Instagram, that's how, or like her Pinterest board, if she ever had one, which just, she obviously yeah. won't. <laughs> but, you know, that's, I think it's a really, it's really kind interesting. Of smart, though. I think you have to be, you have to be so savvy when you're trying to appeal to a younger generation. Mm. And this is kind of this kind of aloof, is it a brand? Is it a person? That's her like, probably. Just so trendy. Mm. I want to be you. Yeah. And that posting of a article putting glitches over it is like a really subliminal kind of. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Maybe you want to buy it. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think MA kind of nailed that with this yeah. whole newsletter thing, and it's like meet the MA girl, and then they get the MA girl to doodle, and then put some like scrapbook like these, some mm. little scrapbook things about themselves, like oh I'm like whatever, and I'm 17, and I love yeah. cats, and I'm from Germany, and. <laughs> But this is my favorite MA item, and it's like the most yeah. subliminal messaging right. ever. It's so smart because I look at that and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Like, she loves Studio Ghibli films. I love Studio Ghibli films. Got so maybe much I want the same jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. It's like picking a Barbie, kind of. It is, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's picking a Barbie, though. It is. I think that's, that's really clever because my 15 year old little sister wouldn't see through that. She would just. Mm lap that straight up, go to their Instagram and start trawling and following and then eventually probably buy something. Yeah. yeah. My only issue with that is though, Marcus made is not cheap. Mm. So no. this Well, it's cheap for a designer that shows at Fashion Week. True. But then again, that's the thing. I think that's where they, that's where the LVMH prize kind of helps them because they do the, the, all these accessories and they, they start doing sunglasses and all that. I feel like that's something that, you know, a brand, like a young pair of, you know, a young couple would not just be able to do that out of the blue without mm, any investment. Yeah. And they kind of did it like, I think, feel like, you know, a lot of brands that they, they get the funding, they invest in something, you know, different things. And they literally, I feel like they, you can see where that money went, mm. it went straight into like expanding a brand, yeah. like making a full brand, which I think is successful, but it, it is pro a bit problematic when, when you think the whole thing, you know, it's not, you know, it's still 300 or 400 pair for, uh, pounds for a pair of jeans, I assume. So how, you know, like that's kind of like, it's approached as if it's like something like really, you know, easy to buy and all of that. Yeah, like this looks like it's appealing to... Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Yeah. straight into university, maybe even younger. Yeah. But I feel like you can at least get one piece yeah. and then rock that's it the forever. Yeah. Do you know what that's I mean? True. Like, I feel like they're not so unapproachable. It's like all oh, 1,000, 2,000. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. like, how am I ever going to afford that? Yeah. Like, student loan gone, like, bam. <laughs> 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 like, I feel like with Emma, you could at least buy like, a pair of jeans or even a pair of shoes. And then, like, yeah. you know, maybe I eat random noodles for a little while and then, you know, come back and buy some more. I think it's just kind of like a thing mm. that you build on rather than just, like, buy a bunch of stuff or, you know what I mean? Like, it still appeals to that younger client, but... It makes you appreciate it more. Exactly. Wow, I saved up for those jeans. For the, right? I'm yeah, gonna I'm going to rock this today. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. And there's all kind of statement pieces if you think about it. I feel like that's, you know, even the simple jeans, uh, like they still are, you know, a Marquez pair of jeans. It's not, it's not like a pair of jeans with a Marquez label. Right. It's like a Marquez Almeida pair of jeans. So I think that's why you, that's why you get the mm. whole, I feel, yeah, I agree with the appreciation of it. Yeah. Where it's, you know, like even whatever you buy, it's kind of a piece like, what you're wearing now, you know, everyone can see that it's a mark is made a top. It's one of it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and they're still they've got a really decent range on on Letterporte that the, the yeah. it's and, and on matches and on the US stockers. 
Um, so you're still reaching, so Net-a-Porter's average customer age is kind of 45. You're still reaching that older customer sure. who's got money to spend regularly and who checks yeah. just in every week and is shopping from this kind of designer brand. Mm. You know, it's not just a one-off special piece because that's where you really need to be if you're going to hit your numbers. And if you're going to, if you know, they've established this brand now, yeah. thanks to the LVMH prize, yeah. this is the kind of stockers they need to nail to be able to keep up, have the sales that are part of a brand. And I feel like there's like the, a pro, sense of product in their designs, yeah. which I feel like they share with Molly when it's, again, the dress and the variations of that dress. With them, there's always like a thing, a season that they do. So the last season, it was that puffer jacket, the yeah. red one that was like everywhere. Yeah. And not even not just fashion week, it was like everywhere. You know, you, there, you had an H&M version of it. And you know, when you get an H&M version of it, you you're like, made it. you made it. <laughs> so, you know, and I, yeah, now they're continuing with like different colorways yeah. and all that. So I feel like they, they, they are very product savvy. They're not just, you know, like these kids that are like super creative. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I feel like it's, they're an interesting one to watch. The, the bags are also quite incredible. I feel like they're kind of like yeah. such a, statement piece with like a piece of plastic chain yeah. and, you know it's simple as that but I kept those going actually actually should we look at the show yeah <laughs> um because there was like, i think there was something like over 40 looks so there's impressive. a lot of stuff full looks all full looks, looks. Full full looks. looks. Not full just looks. Like dress. and you're right accessories to the max there was loads of bags yeah um like a decent variation of shoes um i'm gonna try and read the press release dun, 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 dun. i like the prints um, so they said they've been thinking a lot about the expectations on girls and women and everything that they're expected to do. You're expected to be great at your job, build a successful, successful career, but you can't leave behind your personal life and you should be able to have a family and look after your family and look amazing while doing everything. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> no, and it's like, it's, yeah. And as simple as that sounds, that's how their looks are. You know, like they don't have to give you like the painter that they referenced or like a piece of artwork or like a... You know, it's not about that. I feel like it's genuinely just clothes that are Instagram friendly, that, you know, a bit of feathers, they a bit look of. Yeah. so comfy. Like, yeah. I would want to wear that. I think it's just Effortless. for girls to feel good in, like, not mm. girls, women. women. Women to feel good in. They had, like, um, all these kind of motivational songs playing. So they had the winning song from Little Miss Sunshine. And then that went into, like, Dolly Parton talking about how her mum used to, like, cook for her and sing for her. It was on the soundtrack. Yeah, and then that went into, like, Song from the, the Bling? No. I can't remember what it was, but it was like Cool Girl Rock. Yeah. Then back into Little Miss Sunshine. It was kind of nice. And I think this is what like sexy is now. It's just mm. like, do you know what I mean? It's just like fun, effortless, like the confidence you can see from a mile away. They still kept those, you know, unique um, prints that Mark has made and are known for, but it's still, it's still it's, I think it's much cooler, like even than from what they've done before. I think it's just very like, this is badass. This is like a girl going to work wearing this. Like, it seems mm. like ages ago it would be like, what, what are you wearing? But now it's just like, this is sexy. This is cool. This is now, I feel. Yeah. For sure. And you can take any of this, I think. Like, yeah. so many people I know just take the trousers and mm. wear it with their own. Of exactly. course, yeah. yeah. Or you could do full look and be an MA girl. Yeah. I do feel like it's, you know, it's very now what I feel like they're doing. It's, and what they've always been doing is something that's very kind of, you know, it's not, which I think is what their, where their success lies, which is not trying to like, you know, go five years ahead and try to invent something or be ahead of the trend. I feel like they're just bang on. Um, and I feel like because they, I, I'm not sure if they have resort collections. I would love they to. They used see. to, and they do. I don't think they. I don't think they do anymore. Don't they don't Which is kind of for them, it makes it doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's exactly what I want to say. For them, it's like these things. I mean, they can be any season. Mm. They yeah. don't, like That's you true. don't. You know, these clothes are so like reverent. They're just yeah, like there. Sense. You know, and you can buy them now, or you know, two months ago, or like a year from yeah. now, you would kind of feel the vibe. I don't feel like they're necessarily too trendy, but also not too kind of classic. So I feel like they kind of hit that spot somewhere. Yeah. I feel like they bring something new every season as well. So mm. I don't know if it was last time or maybe the time before was all these huge dramatic stripes. It was last time. Last yeah. time. And they're back in very different variations. And Animal Print was a little while ago, and that's kind of back. And obviously the, the low rise wide leg are the always going to be there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's cool. Amazing. And then they've introduced this time this kind of um, 
kind of like William Morrissey, but I'm kind of making making that up as I go along, kind of. <laughs> Kind okay, of that kind of vibe. Um, and then a also, lazy William Morrow. Lazy William <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. And then um, this, like, Asian print with dragons and kind of... Mm. It has, like, some little Jung Sam-type cutouts down the dresses and stuff yeah. like that. I'm not sure how that fits in with everything else, but, I mean, I'd wear it, so, <laughs> so it works. So that Susie Bubble posted that she's going to wear it to her Ma- Mahjong party or something like that. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like, you know, people approved of it. People like it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. But it's cool. I think it's cool. Like, you know, I, I feel like it's, you could go through each of the looks and pick it apart and kind of say, oh, this is this or this. Yeah. But I feel like it's kind of totally, it's more of like the whole vibe that they are carrying the girl. Yeah, it's great to see it as a full. Yeah, collection. you know what I mean? Yeah. I there's like, no, there's no like, it's like you were saying, there's no obvious narrative like, oh, it was inspired by this yes, fantastic yeah. artist. Mm. But it all makes complete sense. And it's highly, well, it's like that Guardian article said this time last year, it's one part commercial, two parts, really Instagram friendly. Yeah. That's There's clearly true. another yeah, red yeah. puffer in there, um, or three. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like they're encouraging you to do that, to mm. mix the mm. MA pieces with, oh, some jeans I found at the thrift store, or, mm. you know, my old mum's like, dress, like, I can easily buy, like, a shirt that's similar to that shirt that... Um, I think it was like a blue striped shirt, and then they can wear that corset over it, and then bam, I'm kind of part H&M of it. H&M corset. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, I feel like it's, that's how I feel it's relating to their customer. I feel like, you know, people do say that a lot about, but like, f- I feel like these girls, if they like walked out of the show dressed like this, it'll be fine. Mm. You know, they wouldn't be, look like they're f- coming from a catwalk show. Mm. They would look like just normal girls that yeah. are like fashionable. Yeah. Uh, I think but, that's the strength. I think yeah, that's yeah. absolutely. No, 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 absolutely. Like that's like, like they just look. they're just bored. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I feel like when you go into their backstage, it's just like it feels like they're the girls could just walk out of there, and it's and that's amazing. I love, absolutely love this red coat, I'm like with the black so lapel. Cool. It's so beautiful. And then the next look, I feel like it's like a double red stripe, which is like amazing. Mm-hmm. So I feel like yeah. yeah. And through having yes. MA girls rather than models who have to rush off to the next show, they're desperate to get out yeah. of their look, mm-hmm. they hate having their hair done for the eighth time that day. Mm-hmm. These girls, I noticed on that, I didn't look at the show before this, but I looked at um, photos tagged on their Instagram with them. Mm-hmm. and. All the girls have been Instagramming endlessly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this guaranteed way to make your show go exactly. so spiral. Exactly. Yeah. So smart because they're delighted to be in the show and want to yeah. do a like step by step process. And also, like every moment, so everyone knows someone who knows an MA girl. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know an MA yeah. girl, you know, like Tess Yop or Mash, like. Yeah, or anyone like that, that they're kind of aspirational for young girls in fashion or young men in yeah, fashion. True. Yeah, true. Our good friend uh, Ria is always yeah. walking in the MA show and she really like reps them hard like in a genuine way and we're just like, yeah. like it gets us excited and like imagine how many other, you know, I know, with, like, I know exactly. Work, like me, so I feel like yeah. exactly. even on this panel, you know, like somehow yeah. have like a like are they five models of or are they no, customers? No, they're just girls. Yeah, just girls. Stylist, my, my, like, like swag. The stylist, yeah. you know, this and that. And just, yeah. I feel like also they have, they own themselves. Like all these girls kind of like mm. own being an um, MA girl. It's not about, it's in a way being inclusive. And like that show is kind of, you know, Instagram friendly. They wanted to, oh, this, yeah, sorry, Rhea. this red look. Yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah. The red and white look. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most yeah. amazing look with the long yeah. jumper. I really like the costume. So beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the costume is really cool. And it's, strong. Yeah. I love how everyone has the afters out because you rarely exactly. ever see that. Rarely, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. And it's like minimal makeup. It's just very like straight Easy. off the street. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a nice yeah. big bag. Oh, just yes. Which is the red and white one? Just gone. Um, oh. It was like big. It had a tuft of like fur. I don't yeah. know if it was, oh, okay. that was real. Coming out like maybe it was hair. Mm. But it was literally massive. So before they were cute little the mini ones, yeah. And like oh, this old accessory, and they had those too, but they've literally Max out. maximized. Put mm. some like. Hairy fur on it. It's yeah. like bright, massive, carrying it under the arms. Oh yeah, love. Like Incredible. it's just, it, it's just like really cool. Oh. And again, like I feel like they're not, you know, so many brands now are being all about, you know, just like for like a specific type or like you have, it's all hidden and all of that. I feel like yeah. this doesn't, you know, doesn't feel. You can, it's approachable as much as high, like high fashion can be approachable. Yeah. And they're kind of not, you know, not afraid of like. These girls sharing stuff on Instagram when they're on fittings and all of that. So 
this is such yeah. a smart move having your entire mm. cast of 40 models being able to Instagram and promote. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> who wants to buy advertisement yeah. in a magazine? Yeah. Why so would smart. you? There you go. That's the crazy oh, person. That's incredible. Cool. I love that. I mean, fur? Ooh, I want that. Her hair? Fur? I think it's skin. The skin. skin yeah. Oh. yeah. I think it's important for these kind of brands to kind of be aware, as we were saying before, about the business side. It's so mm. important to, like, to not forget this is a business. We need to make money. And like, they really are focusing on their accessories because obviously everyone knows accessories is where you make the most money. And I feel like they're really on point with that. And you can, you can see the brand evolving. You can see the brand growing. And it's amazing that their attention to detail, I mean, that bag is incredible. Like very lux, yeah. lux. Lux, you know, exactly, yeah. for a young brand. It's like yeah. luxury. You want to spend that money because it looks good. It's actually quality, and it's amazing. Yeah. But I, equally, the accessories market is really hard to like get a foot exactly, in. To nail and it was it. really interesting. When I was looking at where they were stocked yeah. earlier today, everyone takes the kind of statement puffer mm. or the statement dress. How pretty is that dress on the left there? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. not yeah. The, yeah. I could only really find their accessories on their website. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is great if you're a customer, yeah. because you're like, it's exclusive, not many people will have right. this. But it would be fantastic to see um, if they, they can start getting yeah. stockists yeah. for that. I think they just need a bit more time. That's, yeah. That's what... yeah, with accessories, I feel like you have to kind of, people want, you know, I feel like Neta Porte will buy that bag probably in like two seasons. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. The most simple one, when they exactly. see like the girls are actually wearing them. Yeah. But also I think with accessories, the biggest thing is like quality control yeah, and like yeah, sure. to have like shoes, being sold somewhere mm. it's, as for a brand exactly. it's like ridiculously difficult because like yeah. you can't if once like somebody buys shoes and like something falls off or mm. something like tears apart like you know you you're done with that stockist for, forever probably <laughs> so i feel like you know there's there's probably a lot there there's you know to work on mm, i feel yeah. but there's so there's so much space to grow and it's just yeah. kind of like feels like the whole their whole vibe is just going. It's not stopping anywhere. It does. I don't see an expiration date personally on that. Yeah. I was at Port Elliot Festival last year, and they did um, at Port Elliot. It's this festival in Cornwall. Mm. You probably know it. Fashion, art, food, music, and they did um, a festival casting for that. And they had all different ages in mm. in Marcus Almeida, and it looked so natural mm -hmm. and it looked as the girls looked as great as the girls at the show today and yeah. it was it was really it's amazing to see it in a completely different context because yeah. obviously this is a context that i would expect mm. it's a london yeah. setting it's quite gray it's the light's great i think that was just a lucky yeah, day of sunshine yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks so good the well photos done, guys. Cool. You came for that. <laughs> Um, but it, yeah, it, well, it was kind of magic there. It was amazing. Yeah. And, and the, the designers spoke about, um, well, their, their brand career history so far. And yeah, they've got a good partnership there, I feel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be honest, when we're looking at the girls, which are obviously really cool, it, it still has to be said that these girls look like, you know, models. Yeah, and, uh, all very is, attractive. You know, there's, they're all very kind of like current look yeah. of a model of girls that are followed on Instagram they're all you know predominantly skinny and like yeah. of a certain height or maybe some that are not of a certain height they still have you know like a face of a model they all had great bottoms I'll just say that a bottom they've been doing like, squats backstage like, yeah. <laughs> standard issue if you want to be an MA girl you've got to have a <laughs> <laughs> No, you know, like, I feel like that's, that has to be said. We can't be, like, lying to ourselves and say, like, oh, my God, this is such, you know, yeah. it's still a model yeah, environment. And likewise, at the festival, all the of, girls were still... Yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. is, you know, but, like, it's absolutely fair. It's like baby steps, and I feel like this works with their brand. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And it's, and it's, and it's that thing of, like, being aspirational. Mm. You know, I feel like these girls are, for whatever reason, for their coolness, probably, mostly, they feel mm. aspirational. I mean, yeah. If I could pull off a crop top, Ooh, yeah. I would. I, know, I would look guys. at her. Yeah, you know, I would like. I believe in you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. You know me well, Georgie. You know me well. I think. I think you're right. I think. Uh, not this is like really lame, but I think they are just cool. Yeah. And if anyone else was kind of doing this, look at this. Look at this cute little video we posted of so and so and her dog or like whatever mm. that they do on their Instagram. Not they've they mm. done that, but. Um, I think it would come across as we know you're trying, we can read you. Yeah. Mm. It's so difficult to appeal to a young audience because they're just so smart and savvy. They'd be like, I can see right through that. I can see right through your campaign. Yeah. I can see right through you what you're trying to do here with yeah. 
and you know you have to hashtag ad but MA have this real loophole and they can just be like look at this amazing girl and her amazing stuff and that feels cool I don't feel like I'm being tricked I don't feel like I'm being conned also the girls love it themselves exactly you feel you know it's not like they gave them a jacket so they can post it on their Instagram yeah. it's they gave them a jacket because the girl wanted a jacket and but they also know that when they give it to her she's going to take loads of pics and yeah. like post it so I feel like you know it's this smart as you said a loophole maybe but I feel like it's a smart way of doing thing and I feel like you know you can't like take that and put it onto like a brand it's not like a you know a social media strategy that they have I feel mm -hmm. I feel like talking about them as social media savvy people it's just kind of shows how cool their clothes are mm. and that's it but well, it's yeah. true of celebrity <laughs> it's true of celebrity dressing I mean yeah. realize, yes now because celebrities most of it is is paid God, most of dressing Instagrammers is paid half the time, yeah, isn't right. it? But um, to get the, the, the times in our 20-year brand history where the looks have been the best on a celebrity, it's where the girl just loves it. Yeah. She, often they even buy it themselves. Yeah. Mm. But it looks fantastic and therefore it gets picked up by all the press. I think that kind of forced styling, everyone can just read straight through it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But this is, I think, that's the celebrity dressing aspect is really important to raise. We're, you know, five years ago, I think if we were talking about a successful emerging brand, we'd probably be saying, and isn't it fantastic? It's been seen in everyone from Rihanna to Kylie. This brand has been worn by Rihanna and Kylie, but how refreshing that we're nearly at the end of the panel. We haven't been talking about that. We've been talking about the MA girls. Yeah. That's true. That's a very good point. I would love to like, everyone's better over. I think, you know, I feel like you can maybe talk about that as well because yeah. as a brand, as a design, I mean, both of you actually yeah. can talk about that. And Will you send Rihanna some of your stuff? <laughs> I mean, I would love to, yeah. <laughs> Rihanna's really cool. <laughs> like, I don't know, I just want people to love it and want to wear it because they really mm -hmm. like it. Not like I'm really trying to push this so everyone can see my stuff. Yeah. I think it's better when they're really into it because then they rep you more, they want to work with you, like, they want to get to know you. Just authentic that way. Really, exactly, yeah. yeah. When I feel like as young people, we don't like being told what to like. We kind of like setting our own standards of what we think is yeah. good and what we think it's not. So I'm actually really happy I didn't see any hoodies. <laughs> 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 exactly. No, that's I'm a like really so good point. I'm so tired of seeing a hoodie down the runway yes. because I feel like Absolutely. I love clothes. Like, I don't want to just be wearing a hoodie yeah. all yeah. the time. Like, just make some really beautiful stuff that's easy that I can want to buy and like... Yeah. Look at, like Asai, do you know Asai, um, the designer? Yeah. Asai, yeah. Yeah. the fashion, uh, fashionista. He, he, fashion yeah. like, he has this mesh top and I saw that and I literally just fell in love with it. And like yeah. when I bought it, I just had it in my house and I'm just like staring at it. Like, like, yeah, on the wall, like, beautiful, yeah. 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 I think it's important because it's like, I think people want to discover things now. Yeah. You know, we've gone so far with the Instagram, the everything, and it's just like, oh, I just want to discover something like brand new. And like people can be really pretentious with it, or it can just be like, oh, I just want to have like something cool that nobody has for a change. And I think a brand like Marquez, you can kind of discover, and people will, you can rock one piece that maybe is not so synonymous, like not the jeans, but maybe something like the mm -hmm. dress or the corset top, and be like, oh, where's that from? Like people want to kind of get back to that now. I feel, and that's kind of what I wanted with my brand, like. Um, you know, I have had, had celebrities wear it, and obviously I'm going to post because, you know, they discovered my brand. Rihanna. Yeah, Rihanna, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, like, well, we're at when it. she discovered my brand, I was like, how on earth did it go from that to me, like, little old me? Like, so it's just kind of crazy. Like, so I kind of, like, I admire that people still want to discover things and mm. still want to find things that aren't so, like, out there or so obvious. Um, so I think that's kind of important now. Mm. Thank yeah. God for Instagram, because that's, yeah. like... <laughs> The link, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the plug. I think it's really refreshing to hear you say that, actually, because mm. I speak to a lot in my spare time. I also um, have this fashion and tech networking group. Mm. And through that, a lot of young designers speak to me being like, so how do I build my, the, you know, how do I get the social media following yeah. up? Or particularly also not so much young designers, young brands that mm. want to get to that brand level really mm. quickly. And so many, they see this pressure in numbers and they find it actually holds them back and they feel like it's a popularity contest. It's so yeah. refreshing to hear you say that and just say, actually, thank God. Mm. It's yeah. a really amazing discovery exactly. tool. Yeah. It worries me when I see like the young CSM kids that are like, it wasn't back in my day. <laughs> we were kind of just kind of like exploring, experimenting, and we were allowed to fail. Like there's a thing about CSM being this amazing fashion school where you can just do what you want and kind of like 
vibe and kind of find your feet as a designer. Like, it took me ages to find my feet. Like, my final year is kind of like where I found my feet, and I've been there for five years. So, you know, it's like allowing yourself to kind of make mistakes or kind of experiment with this, these kind of aesthetics or finding your aesthetic. Like, that's what it's all about. Otherwise, you're just zooming into something that you're not really experienced on or you haven't allowed yourself to make the mistakes or have a failure like the best thing is come out of failing and I keep telling that to all my like young kids that you know when I get in industry I'm like you just have to allow yourself to fail or just at least experience a hiccup and then kind of how do I learn from that how do I grow from that how do I instead of being like oh I'm Instagram ready I'm focused I'm done I'm the full package now yeah. I want to be in Vogue and I want to be in this now at this age because it's important to be like and they're, they're kind of like doing it by year or something like that. And it's like, I think it's a, pro a bit of a problem here, the pace mm, of the industry, the pace, which is, yeah. you know, not a lot of people can, for example, after studying at CSM, they can't afford to, you know, stay in London yeah. or kind of, or even, you know, even visa wise, like mm. they can't stay in London. So they have to try to make it work right away right. and right. kind of, you know, shoot into the stars. Mm. And I think people like, you know, some young people like JW or mm. Craig Green or yeah. Marquez. I mean, they did that. They, they had the chance that they actually succeeded with their graduate collections the same way that McQueen did like and they bought all of his like graduate collection or Stella McCartney mm -hmm. and so I feel like there, there are those like kind of the shining stars that are mm -hmm. that have proved how kind of it's easy yeah. you know yeah, like, exactly. as if it's like oh it's fine you know like and, and then <laughs> the problem is I feel like sometimes it feels like when people don't get their like graduate collections bought, they kind of like, you know, fade away and never, you never see them again. Yeah. And there is that kind of sense of like just newness because you know what, next mm. year there'll be another 80 students yeah, that just exactly. graduated. Yeah. And it's, that's I feel like a bit of a problem where you don't get a lot of Marquezes, you yeah. know, that often. Like being on CSM, like all my other friends, like none of them were on Instagram. Like they all hated Instagram. Mm. They weren't even trying to get into that. They were like, <laughs> oh, you're the Instagram guy. I'm like, but. I it's normal. Yeah, like, to me, it's just like, post, yeah. I'm into it. Like, I meet so many people. Like, I see so many things that really inspire me. It's like, why would I not want to be exactly. on that platform? Mm. Yeah. Exactly. I think, I think um, you're right. And also, when you're a graduate, you have that. Um, the part of the success is this polished Instagram that, has yeah. that you're both talking about. CSM students. And I think, I think there's a lot of pressure to not only create this amazing collection that's going to succeed to such a high level, but you've done it and you've nailed social media already and you've already got a business head on and, hey, look at me, I just graduated and I've got this amazing collection, yeah. amazing Instagram mm. and everyone's fan. And that doesn't happen. That's not realistic, like you were just saying. It's, and I think that's part of why MA does so well is because it's a bit kind of home video almost, mm -hmm. a very like yeah. lo-fi, mm -hmm. bit doodle, bit this, but the designs are super impressive. So you, you, you can juggle both. It's still also, I feel like, commercial. I feel like that's a big thing for them. I mean, you know, they're not trying to be something. Great. And I feel like that's a thing with, like, when you graduate, which I think I'm sure you can say, you know, if somebody comes and say, like, oh, what are your, like, how much does this cost? You know, like a buyer from a shop, like, how much will these trousers cost if I buy them, like, five pieces and, like, these sizes and can you produce them and all of that? I feel like that's a thing that, yeah. you know, like, Yes, it's great Instagram, it's a great story, but you know, you can't buy them. And I mean, for example, Matty Bowen's stuff, which I think are absolutely incredible, and I think he's, he's like a kind of, in, in terms of Instagram and his whole story, he's like, you know, making all this stuff in Yorkshire with his mom, and you know, it's yeah. such a kind of endearing story, and on social media is so successful, and he's all over Love magazine, and contributing to it, and being in front of the camera, but then, like, if you, you can't really, I mean, I know that he's actually doing, like, now an exclusive collection of knitwear um, for, I think, matches, but, like, it's, other than that, you, you know, you can't really just go into a shop and buy Matty's stuff, yeah. when you feel like, you know, you, you, Matty is already a you know, and it's a fairly established name in, yeah. in the fashion industry. It's not like he just, you know, popped out. So I feel like there's different ways of succeeding and there's people that then go on to be creative directors of mm. yeah. things or, um, yeah, like I feel uh, another interesting point for me was when it was the RCA graduate show and I did, I went to see their like studio tour mm. and you talked to a lot of people and probably 95% of the guys were like, we want to work for Nike. I want to work for this. You know, there was only a very few people that were like, oh, I really want to start my own brand. 
yeah. which I think is, you know, and it's, so it's a lot, though. yeah. It's like, so I've interned for a lot of people who just started their brands and to see like how much goes into everything, like it's so mm. much to think about, especially like at a young age. Like yeah. Yeah. you really need to be 100% dedicated to this to be like every day I'm going to be up at 7, like till yeah. 10 p.m. Yeah. working on this day by day. Yeah. And it's a lot to ask. From like you, mm, yeah. especially course. when you don't have like anyone investing in you. And exactly. Like you have to do Instagram. You have to do this. You have yeah. to do these parties and meet people. And it's just like mm. people are just like, whoa, <laughs> like slow down. But in a way, it's a blessing and a curse because sometimes you can look, you can look so lit on Instagram, but meanwhile you're struggling to get the funding yeah, to get yeah, it together. Yeah, sure. Like it's of such course, a perception. It's yeah. just like yeah. wow. Like smoke and mirrors. Yeah, smoke yeah. and mirrors for sure. But then again, it's also healthy. You know, we don't you don't need new designers all the time. I think it's kind of. It's, as it is a bit like discouraging, I feel like it's mm. also kind of cool that you see like a 22 year old saying or a 25 year old saying, no, I actually, you know, I want to be a sports or designer at Nike. It's not this like false yeah. sense yeah. of like, oh, I, I'm so good. I like, you know, not everyone's story should be told as yeah. their own, yeah. <laughs> which I think a lot of people don't. I think at Fashion Week, the, the, what's so difficult at London Fashion mm. Week is we've got this reputation because I used to be at the British Fashion Council and it's almost like this pressure of, well, London is a hotbed of like creative cool. young yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and I was there 10 years ago when it was, it really, I mean, it still is now, but there was just that like influx of Roxander and Christopher yeah, and Erdem right, and the right. Mary and Michael Vanderham, um, who is sadly no longer, um, I think he's working as well, but there, there really was just mm -hmm. so much yeah. talent all at once. And that's such a pressure for a fashion capital to mm -hmm. live up to. And I think it puts the designers under a lot of pressure of too, course. like yeah, you were yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so refreshing to hear that actually a lot of them now are saying, Actually, I'd really like to that's go and exactly, work in a big yeah. brand. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. Because if you look at like how Fashionista has been going for quite a while now, yeah. if you like, I recently, like maybe a few months ago, went onto their website, and yeah. you can see like all the past members, and like yeah. I don't like I genuinely <laughs> remember maybe know like but, three names from the last yeah. ten years. So. Yeah. And it's the whereas thing the where time it's... ten years ago, all of those Everyone, designers yeah. have gone places. Exactly. Yeah. Made on Fashionista. Yeah, they, yeah were. they were. Well, like a while ago. They did fashion use, then new gen, and then um, they did fashion use, like, then new gen, and then, and then the prize. I remember when I was in my year out, like I realized I was like I don't want to design clothes anymore. Like I want to yeah. just do leather accessories and like jewelry because like mm -hmm. I was just sick of clothes. Like it was just too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went in to do my final collection. And I'm like, wow, like I love this again. Like this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. so it's like you never really know where like your journey is going to take you. I think people yeah. need to just like go with it, yeah, and like what you were it. saying about yeah. making mistakes, like yeah. learning from it, like just be open-minded really. Mm -hmm. Exactly, for sure. Message. Yeah. The Mark has made a message. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's true, true. it's true. Friends of MMA yeah. right there, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we like the show, we approve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. true. Nods yeah. all around. Mm. Yeah. Should we so give we... them a round of applause? Yes. Yeah.